imagine. It's 2 a.m., the rest of the world is asleep, but your eyes are wide open because your dreams and imaginations are keeping you up. Well, for me, this is the only time that I found to write. So picture this, a seven-year-old girl with an imagination larger than life. She's ambitious, courageous, and a dreamer. She's also the main character from my children's book, Witty Kids, I Dream to Be. The word witty, it's an acronym that actually stands for when imagination talks to you. Witty. This young character is also a reflection of my childhood. I had a huge imagination as a child. I remember I would talk to my stuffed animals like they were my friends. That's imagination, right? I also told myself that I would be successful one day. I didn't know what that looked like, but I believed it. And I'm pretty sure this young girl had a good idea. This is me as a child, ambitious, courageous, and a dreamer. I had a huge imagination. My mother had an entire collection of encyclopedias. If you know anything about encyclopedias, <laughs> it's information overload in a book. Sounds fun. But I remember looking at all the pages in the book. And I remember I would write down the longest words in the book, and that was my biggest challenge. By me doing that, I was envisioning myself as being a writer. I also remember collecting things as a child. I collected McDonald's stat cards. So you may or may not remember, but back in the day, McDonald's would provide trading cards, sports trading cards. It had different players on it and different information. Well, I remember getting a Dan Marino football card, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever to me. So just imagine getting a Happy Meal for your child, and they're excited to see the card inside of the box. Well, I was excited to see what player I was gonna get. And next thing you know, I collected over 100 of these cards. So these cards became like my clients. And we had a lot of conversations. <laughs> so at seven years old, I was like a player's rep for the NFL. <laughs> and that's my imagination. And it was also in my DNA. My father was once a professional baseball player. He played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And my mother was an educator who started off as a teacher, but retired as a principal. So I knew that at my core, I would be determined. It wasn't until I became a mother where I understood the importance of books that looked like my children. I remember we would go to the bookstore and look for books that they could identify with, books that looked like them, books that looked like their friends, and there were very few. So I did some research. And the research shown that between the years 2000 and 2016, only 6% of children's books that represented black characters, 6%. So in 16 years, out of all children's books published, only 6% represented black characters. That's a very small number. So here I am, it's 2 a.m. again, and my imaginations are talking to me. I'm currently a new mother, I'm on maternity leave, I'm working for a Fortune 100 company, and I have my masters. Who knew that my imaginations from my childhood would inspire me to write a children's book? My children inspired me to write a children's book. The need for diverse literature inspired me to write a children's book. So in 2017, I self-published my first children's book, Witty Kids. The book is about a young girl who imagines herself to be different characters, an astronaut, an engineer, an artist, a chef. Kids need that type of representation in books in order for them to believe in themselves. Representation in books is very important. 
Reading is powerful. My imaginations from my childhood inspired me. It told me that I would be a writer, so I produced this children's book. My daughters encouraged me. I wanted to be a superhero for my girls so that I can leave behind a business that encourages imagination. In my book, I say, the world wants to hear your imaginations. The world wants to hear your visions. The world wants to hear your ideas. So when imagination talks to you, I want you to do three things. I want you to do one, write it down. Even if it's 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., just write it down. Write down your ideas. The second thing I want you to do is envision yourself already in that space. Envision yourself as if it's already happened. And the third thing is to own your creativity. It's your work. There's no judgment. Imagination is fun. Reading is powerful. Representation is powerful. The world wants all of you. The world wants to hear all of your ideas when imagination talks to you. When imagination talks to you when imagination talks to you.